ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಂವಾದ Namaste welcome to Bhakti Sambad you are watching Nepal's one and only spiritual channel Bhakti Darshan International Television and I am Manita Pokhrel Sai Baba has once said that where there is faith there is love where there is love there is peace where there is peace there is god and where there is god there is bliss So today we are going to talk about Sanjay Sai Baba and his Uh, devotees who are living worldwide and the fact that we have to know is sanjay sai baba is a nepali son and he is supposed to be the third incarnation of sai after sidi sai baba and satya sai baba as he is very young uh, is it uh, like 28 years old and he is supposed to be believed by uh, millions of uh, devotees of sai living worldwide so today we have someone who is native to india and he and she has been living uh, in oman since last 28 years and she is mrs chitra narayan let's welcome her welcome ma'am yes. first of all i'd like to request you to introduce us what is sai as i have heard like sai means s a i c always inside mm. but as per you what is sai sai is sir and illumine okay self adoration and association change and individual change mm-hmm. so that is what is sai and it is journey from i to v and v to he the ultimate okay so then my second question would be like what is spiritualism for you spiritualism is you know like having unshakable faith and surrender totally at the divine lotus feet okay so that is what we should understand what is spiritualism actually is uh, according to me okay mm-hmm. so um, you arrived nepal some days back for the occasion of guru purnima that we celebrated last tuesday and uh, it was at Sa- sanjay sai brindavan ashram that was at narifat uh, so we had really great day we also had uh, like live telecasted on that day so we really had a great day and how was your experience at nepal celebrating guru purnima this year 2016 nepal is the land of saints lord buddha incarnated in nepal and the same lord has come in the form of sri sanjay sai baba to evolve involve and resolve the conflicts in human and to make us to evolve to a better understanding and he has come to redeem the world this is what i feel because unless and until the guru calls nobody can come because even a blade of grass cannot move without his will so the divine grace you know like whenever unity of thought word and action is there we take into divya path mm-hmm. and when guru's grace is there it becomes divya path gamini so uh, coming into the celebrations of guru purnima i cannot say that i have come here it is because of bhagwan's will and love that has brought me here okay i will call it a privilege to have you in our studio today as you are the trainer of ss uh, e- yes. hv as well as you are the director of middle east nursery and dhs can you introduce this uh, organizations what kind of organizations are they actually and where are they located okay uh, this middle east nursery and dms it's a nursery school um, in which i am the director and the middle east nursery name is given by bhagwan sri satya sai baba he said in nursery s is there in east a is there and in middle i is there so sai is there in that name this should be the name for the institution so that is how you know like it came and uh, we have around 14 nationalities studying in our nursery and it, everything is based on educare so education is something you know like which helps one to live whereas educare is for life education gives you knowledge educare gives you wisdom education is for information educare is for transformation so education helps one to become great mm-hmm. but educare helps one to become good so totally we concentrate on this great message of bhagwan 
where you know like you have to go from education to educate okay very beautiful so what good kind of uh, like the expectation we can keep on you as you are a side devotee and you are a trainer what kind of uniqueness that you possess while being a trainer and being a side devotee to those children or to those trainees who believe in you okay it is a simple thing be do tell so be a good person do good deeds and tell without being and doing we have no right to tell others because people close their ears for advices and keep their eyes open for examples so we need to be an example and walk the talk okay i have seen lots of devotees who actually believe in sai and they don't believe in any other thing so you were the devotee of satya sai baba and later on when you came to know about sanjay sai baba from nepal what kind of faith you had or what kind of uh, the uh, per, uh, how you perceived him as a person or as a baba uh, regarding the, being the incarnation uh, the third incarnation of sai okay um three years back you know like the international chairman brother pratap takkar he gave me the photograph of bhagwan sri sanjay sai baba and he explained to me in detail so i took the photograph and uh, from whom server i get you know like the saints picture or god's picture i keep it in the altar and i pray and then i used to think that you know like this baba looks so young and chubby he looks like a murphy baby you know and i used to just do like this so like to his cheek you know like on the photograph but the call has not come so you know like uh, that earning was there when but pratap takkar used to you know like whenever i go to india i used to talk to him and he used to say that you know like you are missing you are missing you have to come and see bhagwan so i started my journey of visiting 106 vaishnava kshetram you know like 3 years back mm -hmm. and i wanted to finish by going to muktinath that was the last temple i had to complete you know like out of 108 106 only okay. we can mm -hmm. go for the journey so when i came here pratap takkar said you know like uh, in that meditation call god answered that you know like uh, don't uh, go by your own Uh, search mm -hmm. ask pratap takkar for a guidance and take his advice and go so i called pratap takkar and he gave uh, the phone number and email address of uh, amir sairam who is the national chairman of uh, sanjay sai organization mm -hmm. i spoke to amir bhai and myself and my friend we landed here at that time bhagwan called bhagwan called and uh, he told amir bhai you know like uh, they have reached take care of them when he said no i was so much touched you know only a mother can do i have not seen baba you know, only a mother can have such feeling towards the children then i went and the journey was so beautiful you know like i enjoyed you know like i i just surrendered my, myself with the nature that mukti nath journey was something phenomenal then i came to pashupatinath and that day evening went to sanjay sai vidya mandir met the students uh, i was very happy because i have gone to many satya sai schools for inspection mm -hmm. so when i came here and met the students no i didn't feel any difference the same love the same warmth the same you know like uh, affection everything was the same very happy we came to the ashram myself and my friend karpakam and uh, we had our food at that time i am praying to bhagwan sri satya sai baba that swami if i am wrong you have to show me mm -hmm. the way okay because you have brought me here okay i don't know because i want to see you in sanjay sai i told like that and the bhajan began and when swami came out for a fraction of minute you know i could see satya sai baba standing in front and the same you know like with that umbrella when baba was coming you no know, it was like shirdi sai avatar how shirdi baba was coming and then satya sai you know like how he was coming in you know, like the same way the movements actions everything the look the hair from head to toe i could feel bhagwan's presence then he came down and automatically you know like i knelt down so swami came and patted like this and asked me how was your journey we'll give you interview afterwards you won't believe my heart stopped okay i said you mm -hmm. know like how much 
for me, you know, like goodness, I must have done in my birth to come here. It feels great to know that you, without any doubt, you started believing, believing Sanjay Sai Baba yes. is the third incarnation. So, what takes it for a general public to know that Sanjay Sai Baba is actually the third incarnation of Sai? Hmm. That is in which uh, people have to experience. Because uh, there is Ganga, there is Yamuna, there is, you know, like Saraswati. No, rivers are different, water is one. Now, Gulab Jamun is there, Rasagulla is there, Kheer is there. Sweets are many, sugar is one. Then we have earrings, necklace, bangle, jewels are many, gold is one. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, alphabets are many, English language is one. Now Russian, Chinese, Nepalese, Oman, Indian. So human beings are many, breath is one. Mm -hmm. Nations are many, world is one. So Sai incarnations are many. But Sai Tattva is one. Okay. That, you know, like always Baba says that unless and until I call you, you cannot come. So, he has to call. Because he has called me, I have come. So, when the call goes at the right time to the devotee, everybody will come. Then, you know, like there won't be, you know, like any place even to see Baba's room. The day is not far off. Okay. Most of the people today do not believe in miracle or I mean something like magic and people uh, also call Satya Sai Baba as well as Sanjay Sai Baba a kind of magician. But people do not want to believe in magic and they don't want to uh, expect things to change overnight. So how can people experience it? How can people actually uh, see the changes or the miracles in their real life with their real eyes? Mm. That in you know, like, see, you need to have that uh, you know, like special drishti for that. Unless and until you know, like, because uh, science questions, spirituality quests. Science ends where spirituality begins. Okay, uh, one of the scientists when he went to Baba, Swami said, you know, like he has you know, like sent spacecraft. He said, man can go to moon and Mars, but he is not able to go one inch deep inside his own heart. What is the use of conquering everything when you are not able to conquer your own self? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for everything, you know, like the divine call has to come and when it comes, nothing can stop. Okay. So, I again thought of uh, like returning to those days when you started believing in Sai. What was the main thing, what was the main reason behind that made you to follow Sai? He called, so I came. That is the uh, underlining thing, you know, that is the main. You know. uh, my mother and father both were Sai devotees. So, that Bhakti to Bhagavan was there right from my childhood days. Okay, now uh, let's talk about Sanjay Sai Baba. He is a Nepali person, first of all. And then the uh, bitter truth is that Nepalese people don't want to believe in him until today, most of them. Uh, as we have more like the persons who want to offend than the, those who want to defend Sanjay Sai Baba. Uh, what do you think is the necessary task that you people who are actually involved in uh, Sanjay Sai Baba Foundation need to do so that world will know that Sanjay Sai Baba uh, lives in Nepal and Sanjay Sai Baba is the third incarnation? Um. See, we need not worry about people throwing stones because the tree which has got, you know, like lots of fruits, people will throw. So, uh, all the incarnations, right from Krishna, first they did not accept. Satya Sai Baba, they did not accept because there were lots of, you know, like um, oppositions. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the divinity wins. Nobody can stop the divinity. Now, what is this? This is chocolate. This is chocolate. Okay. Uh, what is there inside? We feel sweet after eating this. After eating this, you mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. the taste of sweetness. Okay. Without tasting the sweetness, if I ask you this question, can you answer? No. No. So because have you have me. experienced the experience so that you can tell that in like this chocolate, it tastes sweet. The same way, 
people have to experience to believe unless until you go through the experience you cannot believe for that you know like unity of thought word and actions has to be there so we have to experience first of all we have to experience that you have to come because you know like you take one step god will take nine steps 100 steps because god gives us test why he is giving test even to go from first standard to second standard we are given examination okay unless and until we are tested we can't go to the next level we we have to give our best baba always says if i don't give you test you will be rusted and dusted because of the test you are going to another level okay so the same way for everything in life you know like there is steps and once we surrender ourselves god will make our journey peaceful because we have to go through hardships end of the day we will reach the ultimate experience Okay. that you know like we should understand uh, to those audience who are hearing about sanjay sai baba for the first time today how would you introduce him how who is sanjay sai baba okay uh, i will tell them you know like go to nepal go to nepal sit in the ashram see bhagwan experience bhagwan explore bhagwan involve yourself and certainly you will evolve so last time i came bhagwan said you know like uh, uh, come for guru purnima okay I said yes swami i will tell as many people as possible he said no problem even if you come it is enough but you know like with bhagwan's grace 23 people came okay and all the 23 people had such innumerable experiences they themselves will go and tell to so many people and already one of my friend viji ganesh she is having a satsang today in her house in chennai expressing her joy about her uh, guru purnima celebrations in nepal and uh, connectivity with bhagwan all right so when was the first time you came to nepal as you told to the audience like you have to come to nepal to believe sanjay sai baba uh, you came last march so yeah. this might be a second time yes okay so what kind of uh, experience you had in nepal while visiting sanjay sai baba and his ashram and watching his social activities mm. uh, uh, coming to swami's for no, first only you know, when i saw swami i had that 100% conviction see once you have confirmed faith should be there and uh, always you know like heart says the right thing so my heart surrendered to bhagwan and i know that you know like i am in the right hand i am the right path next day was holy so holy swami said no like don't go out because you know like uh, lots of hardships you will face so better you stay in the hotel only and take rest but uh, that day night amir sairam called us to his house for dinner and we were just you know, like about to go to buddha nilkanta temple and come that time amir sairam got a call from bhagwan that you know like he is coming to his house mm -hmm. when and I, I, i don't want to go to buddha nilkanta temple i told amir sairam we will cancel that we will wait here for bhagwan only so he said no like no it will take time for him to come you just tell like, him we'll go and return back soon so we returned and swami came it's like you know like as if i i was just praying that no like three days i am there all the three days swami i should pray i should be near you that was my prayer so swami came and then Amir Sairam told me that you know like if you want to ask any question you ask for me. So I was asking about holy. So Swami you know like uh, we only know that you know holika was burnt and that ashes all the devatas you know like took and sprinkled because of joy. That mm -hmm. is the only thing about holy we know. But Swami said you know like in Dwapara Yuga uh, there are more than seven types of holy that was uh, introduced by Lord Krishna. So he said first holy is with flowers they just threw on everybody second holy is kaudang gopal has used kaudang to throw on each other third one taking water and throwing fourth one taking saffron and throwing fifth one with stick holy with stick and then you know like holy with haldi powder mm -hmm. holy with chandan so all these things you know like when he was explaining it is like you know the person who has played all the game is explaining the experiences of himself and we are 
so lucky and we just you know like forgot ourselves and engrossed in those divine moments mm-hmm. so that was something you know like wonderful and the following day when i entered here in uh, nepal i was not knowing which hotel i am staying so i just wrote him you know, like they said uh, the address please i don't know by just like that you know, like i wrote sanjay sai ashram nepal and then swami said tomorrow thursday we were supposed to leave so he said wednesday come and stay in the ashram uh, and thursday you can there also swami answered because you know, like knowingly or unknowingly i wrote mm-hmm. but swami is making that you know like a reality so we went there my friend had you know like uh, she uh, sprinkled and you know like sprained her hand and she couldn't bear she had severe temperature that evening swami came and said you know like oh uh, hand problem he materialized vibhuti and he just you know like uh, touched just really put on her hand my friend said you know, the next second my pain vanished mm-hmm. see it is only the experience that can take you closer okay let me add one more thing that we know god exists everywhere god exists in yes. water god exists in u- universe he exists in air water everything so uh, we know that god exists but then we don't want to believe uh, like claiming that we have neither seen ghost nor, uh, nor we have seen god by our uh, like realize so we don't believe that god exists um, uh, as a person i mean to say like sanjay sai baba being a human being uh, how can we expect that god exists inside a human soul okay um actually it is said in like god sleeps in a stone wakes up in a plant moves in an animal and thinks in a man it thinks in a man mm-hmm. so all the human beings we are all god but we are not realizing that we are god he has realized that he is god god is love love is god Simple. then uh can we call uh sanjay sai baba as the mediator of god or he himself is a god uh, f- no need for any mediators for god no his will can bring anything okay so uh, i i have come here it is because of his call otherwise what is the connectivity so you believe he himself is a god yes 100% there is no doubt at all even you can say 200% 300% my heart just you know like uh, totally surrenders and uh, as i said before there is no questions in god there is only a quest so then please explain us about enlightenment what do you believe about being enlightened enlightened that's a very big word <laughs> that's a very big word mm, i can only say that you know like uh, divinity is in everyone now what is this matchbox matchbox and what do we have inside the matchbox we have matchstick matchsticks so what do we get when we strike sparkle spark mm-hmm. the same way this is the god's world and all the human beings all the creations are the match sticks when we get the spark of love in ourselves that spark comes you know like that is divinity because we are not taking and checking whether each and every stick has got the spark because we believe the same way divinity is there in everyone divinity is there in everyone and there are lots of saints and seers and god who have come through the years in lots of really krishna avatar so many avatars and so many saints so many of them have come only for uh, taking you know like they have ascended to descent they have come to uh, take the humans to a higher level till their mission is achieved the god will not sleep okay now let's move towards oman where you actually live in uh, 
how have you been working there for uh, like conveying sai messages to children and to other uh, trainees who want to learn more about sai so what are the uh, activities that you are performing over there okay i conduct teacher training workshops and then you know like in the school we have activities but we i don't call it as uh, everything connected to values that's it so we have medical seva children bring medicines and give then we have lots of you know like food distributions and to the teachers in like other schools i talk about you know like educare program the educare program is you know like divinity unity of faiths 3 hv five values five techniques role models experiential learning all this together it makes a human being complete so how to incorporate education with educare this is the training that we given uh oman and even other countries i have visited some more countries also and uh, in the school whatever we are doing we bring values into it so who are actually the participants are they indians are so they from oman we have 14 nationalities okay we have you know like indians bangladeshis pakistanis sudanis egyptians uh, americans so like learning has no uh, national boundary no, nothing because nik like, we don't okay in uh, satya sai school or sanjay baba school they chant all the shlokas and bhajans but we have done everything with values in the sense in english because we have to take all the nationalities together so for example foot prayer instead of uh, chanting brahmaarpanam we just say you know like i thank my parents who gave me life i thank my teachers who gives me knowledge i thank the nature who gives me this food i will eat this food to be useful and to serve others with love respect and humility okay very great now uh, let's move on to a uh, short break we'll be right back uh, keep watching bhakti sambad on bhakti darshan television purnamada purnamidam bhakti sambad Welcome back. After this break, you are watching Bhakti Sambad on Bhakti Darshan Television, and today we are talking with uh, Mrs. Chitra Narayan, who is the uh, trainee at SSEHB and director of Middle East Nursery and DHS. She believes in human values, and she is a devotee of Sai. And she has been here in Nepal uh, since some days. Actually, she was here for Guru Purnima special celebration at Sanjay Sai uh, Brindavan Ashram. Uh, specially organized by Sanjay Sai Foundation here in Nepal so she had arrived here from Oman and she is uh, actually native to India and she believes in Sai so we are here talking about her like for the projects that is running in Oman and how is uh, she going to be uh, coordinating with Nepalese team specially uh, for conveying the messages of Sai spreading worldwide uh, welcome to you once again now actually you were here for guru purnima celebration so i'm loving you to ask you who is a good teacher who is a teacher and who is the pathfinder for us okay um okay again like what is this this is palm this is palm. hand mm -hmm. actually uh, in usa in texas there was one boy it's a real incident you know there was one boy by name don so this boy used to be very harsh and they used to dress up very badly and come to school but one teacher always used to go near him love him pet him and make him to understand things in a better manner because she came to realize that he has lost his mother so in the month of november there the school starts in september so in the month of november thanksgiving day came and this boy you know everybody brings some gifts to the teachers so he got on hand like this and he took it to the teacher he was just you know keeping it behind because he was little bit you know like shy to give in front of others so all the children gave and they went then finally this boy came and uh, the teacher asked yes my dear what do you have in your hand mm -hmm. this boy said nothing big you know just show me so he just showed this hand and then she just took it from him this is for me for teachers day thanksgiving day like okay. that she asked 
and this boy said no whose the hand is this is it your hand the boy said no this is the hand which held me so strong when i was crumbling down mm mm-hmm. this is the hand that patted me when i was rolling in tears this is the hand that told me that you can do it this is the hand that said that believe in yourself don't feel inferior you are going to make things happen and this is the hand that is the most precious one for me so the teacher asked is it your mother's hand this boy said no teacher this is your hand you have made me to realize who i am without you i am nobody the teacher felt so happy at the same time she started to cry mm-hmm. because you know like it is said you know, in this world 80% of the teachers are complaining teachers they will say that you know, like i don't have this i don't have that um, timings are too much i have to come many days i have to do so much of correction like that always complaining and 18% teachers 18% teachers are explaining teachers they explain things in a better way to the students where students can understand there are only 2% of the teachers who are inspiring teachers so the inspiring teachers they walk their talk so according to me those teachers who are inspiring they are the best of teachers mm-hmm. for us we have the lord who is inspiring us to inspire others so guru purnima i was very happy to come here for guru purnima celebrations because guru purnima is also known as vyasa purnima now you know like uh, brother pratap takkar the international chairman said we will call from now this is sai purnima mm mm-hmm. not you know like uh, guru purnima now we will call sai guru purnima okay and guru purnima is you know like uh, taking guru's mes- message and proficiency is learning about guru's teachings efficiency is putting practice whatever you have learned so only proficiency will not take you closer to god you need to be efficient to follow what he wants us to do so there is a vast difference between efficiency and proficiency definitely, definitely. so we have to be efficient in order to apply or implement guru's teachings or exactly. teacher's teachings uh so now uh one question that might be kind of materialistic i mean to say like people who are being um or the people who believe in their guru or the guru uh, besides him where there are hundreds and thousands of devotees uh actually in spiritualism or actually while uh, talking about any special teachings or uh, any special organizations that are related to spiritualism they specially focus on uh, helping the underprivileged or supporting the one who have no one but then what we see in reality is uh, those who are actually rich or those who actually can um, uh, gift or present something auspicious something special and something rich are being guru's favorite devotee i mean to say somewhere we find materialistic attachment inside spiritualism mm-hmm. do you think like uh, this is the right thing going in our society or going uh, everywhere in uh, in world see that is the wrong notion one thing is even the person however rich he may be you should have the mind to give god never sees you know like whether you are giving fruits jewels diamonds no god only sees the atma nivedanam he never see he never cares for richness he only cares for the bhava that you have so what is and god is actually that, you know, like rich people are closer to god poor people how can we measure the thought in god we have no right to measure because for him uh see a mother has got four kids so if the mother is giving you know like one child more food that does not mean that that child is special to mother maybe that child is sick or maybe that child need more food or that child may be you know like uh, may have some problem 
but the mother's love for all her kids is the same okay, you cannot you know like say that you no know, like this child is superior to mother or this exactly. child is mm -hmm. inferior the same way bhagwan's love for his devotees is one and the same whether we sit in the first row or last row that is immaterial so what do you think what does god expect from his devotees god never expects anything from the devotees he only wants us to transform because transformation of the heart mm -hmm. that is what is important we cannot be because see in uh, narasimha avatar hiranyaksha was the thing so god could kill him in drama avatar ravana could kill but now if god takes the weapon he has to kill everybody because we all are having two facets you know goodness as well as badness both are there in our mind and heart so if he takes his weapon he has to just you know like completely kill the world mm -hmm. but he will not do that because instead of that he is making you to understand and he has come here to transform your heart Okay. So, what does God expect transformation of the hearts? So, He just wants us to transform. He just wants to uh, us to go from darkness to light. Okay. Yes, yes. So, after knowing this, of course, we have to know that we all are equal in front of God. Or, the, or I mean to say, like God sees us in equal way wherever we live, yes. whatever we do, and however we live in our life. Now, uh, what would be uh, the upcoming projects of Sanjay Sai Baba in Nepal, uh, and that uh, how are you going to cooperate with him or his initiations? Okay, I you know like for this question, you know, like my international chairman, I have to ask him and tell. See, there are lots of wherever we can participate in Bhagwan's program, we all will definitely participate. And in Maharashtra, you know, like sitting in Nepal, you know, like thousands of people are getting benefit in Latur area. Sai Prem Ganga project, you know, where is you know, like Sai is in Nepal, and people from India are getting benefit because you know, like he never sees, he never divides. God always unites. And same way here also. The free school, only free school, Sanjay Sai Vidya Mandir. You know, education with educare is given to everybody. And uh, just you know, like after Guru Purnima Day, we had you know like inaugural festival that is Bhumi Puja at uh, Punyavadi Shetra, where you know like I felt you know like that I am just stepping into Buloha Vaikunt. That sort of feeling. Really, devatas are just you know like uh, flowing, and you could feel the divinity in that place so much. And because you know, like see, uh, even Satya Sai Avatar in the beginning there was lots of problem, but then afterwards people could not even go near. And the day is not far off, because as you know, like devotees, we should hold on mm -hmm. to Lord's feet now, because if we don't, you know, like think like that, we are the losers, not he, because every avatar will come. His mission will go whether we are participating or not. His mission will go. But when we are participating, he is giving us that satisfaction. So I always say, you know, like I am like a small child, you know, God without me, your mission will go. But thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to participate in your mission. He is giving the opportunity. So that, you know, like we should grab. Okay. So, uh, please let us know more about the philosophy of Sai. We have, uh, we have, we get to hear about love. We get to hear about truth and peace. So, like on, uh, please let us know more. Uh, see, um, it's all you know, like all the avatars, you know, like uh, Shirdi Sai, Satya Sai, Sanjay Sai Baba. Everybody, it is you know, like everything is based on love. Love, truth, peace, non-violence, right conduct. Five cardinal values. And five techniques. Everything is you know, like in the system of education. Five techniques are used. See, uh, you just you know, like study many things, okay, and then become a graduate and take your job. Now, if I ask you questions like, who was the second uh, president of Nepal? How many provinces Nepal has got? And uh, in which province uh, most number of people are living? Mm -hmm. And how many castes are there in Nepal? Can you give the figurative statement? Mm -hmm. If I ask all those things, definitely you will say that I don't know. I will get back to you. Because we have studied all this. You must have studied about your country. But Obviously. still, mm -hmm. after studying, you don't 
remember you don't recall you don't recollect because education is something which you study to get a degree to write whatever you have learnt and forget whatever you have learnt that is the education system but whereas if i ask you about like just say two words about uh, two sentences about compassion or to speak something about love you don't need to memorize it comes automatically from your heart that is educate that is what is god mm -hmm. because no need to uh, you know like study study in order to be steady okay this is what it is now we know sai devotees have a kind of glow from within but then we see bibhuti on our forehead so what does this actually symbolize please let us know more about bibhuti okay. bibhuti you know like it's ashes finally we are going to go into ashes so we have to remind ourselves that this body is not permanent so the ultimate thing is to reach the divine soul to reach the divine lotus feet so for that you know like every time oh you know like you are not permanent you are going to go any time so just think that you know like this moment is going to be the last moment okay mm, now i think uh, this might be a kind of awkward question <laughs> for you but how would have your life been if you were not a sai devotee okay uh my life would have gone okay my life would have gone because there are lots of people who are not sai devotees still their life goes on but to me i have so much of peace because there are lots of people who have everything and they don't have peace of mind when like i've got wonderful child my husband supports me and all good friends are there so i feel that it is all because of sai connectivity i'm sure you are frank uh, and yes. i'm sure you are uh, true to your soul yes, that yes, yes. your life would have gone if you were not a sai devotee yes, because like it would have been a materialistic life now this is in like yes i earn i earn i spend i'm happy you know i get you know like uh, i mean what, not what i desire but what i deserve okay we are having very beautiful time i I'm, i'm sure we could go for hours and hours talking to you yes. but then we have time limit mm -hmm. so what i would like to ask you at the end what would you like to convey uh, the message to all nepalese and people living worldwide uh, regarding sanjay sai baba as he is the third incarnation of sai and how should we understand uh, sanjay sai baba uh, see uh, it's a it's a great fortune that for the prayers of the saints and sages in nepal bhagwan sanjay sai baba has come here he is incarnated here and his life is for nepalese people and to redeem the world so it is for us to understand and sometimes what happens uh, we don't understand the value of our own people somebody has to come and tell from outside very true so it is like mm -hmm. that so here don't miss that opportunity because you no know, like it is it's such a glorious moment and please you know like my prayer is you know, like bhagwan bring everyone let everyone enjoy the bliss and ananda that i experience many devotees from abroad you know like we are experiencing and i don't have a mind to go back to tell you the truth no i don't want to go back okay what would be your role in upcoming days in future days to convey this message in international arena okay i will you know like uh, see uh, we have value classes you know i'll be talking to all the already i'm doing you know like i'm talking to many people and wherever bhagwan wants to reach he will reach that's it like my work what i will do you no know, like i can't say that he has to decide whatever he says i will do it is he to guide you yes okay thank you so much for being with thank us so we really much. had great time thank you so thank much thank you so much for giving me this opportunity Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Uh, we talked to Mrs. Chitra Narayan, who is the trainer of SSEHV, who is the director of Middle East Nursery and DHS, and she is a very strong Sai devotee. And she has been living in Oman since last 28 years, and uh, she is 
Indian uh, by nation, uh, by her nationality. And we talked about her Sai understanding and especially her attachment with Sanjay Sai Baba, who is uh, a Nepali um, by birth. And he is now Sanjay Sai Baba for the people living worldwide without having any national boundary. So we talked uh, to her as she had arrived in Nepal for the occasion of Guru Purnima celebration last Tuesday. Uh, we really had a great time talking to her. I hope you people all also enjoyed our talk um, now ultimately by conveying the message of love truth self-respect wisdom and uh, everything that we talked about today uh, we'd like to sign out from today's program thank you so much for watching us keep watching Bhakti Darshan International Television Namaste Bhakti Sambad. 